Dr. Jill about how to prevent heat stroke in our pets. Good morning, Dr. Jill. Hey, Bethany, how are you? Good morning, we're doing great over here. And we know that we've seen some really warm temperatures lately, 104, 102 over the weekend. So what's your advice when it comes to keeping the pets safe in the heat? You know, really important, watch their little foot pads because they can burn on the cement really easily. Those, that cement heats up so hot, it actually can take the layer of skin right off it and have a blistering effect. So I like to recommend this, this is a really cool product, it's, it's called Pad Tough. And a lot of people actually use it when animals are hiking or camping because they're up on the sharp rocks. It's just a really thin coat that's applied to your pet's feet. It's, uh, it's actually water soluble, but it does stay on for about three days and it's safe if they lick it. Oh, that's very cool. And then also, I've seen pets. I was just up at Wanderlust Festival in Tahoe, and I saw a little dog wearing little, like, pet boots to protect the pads of his feet. Yep, here they are, these little thermal boots. They protect them from the snow. They protect them from the heat. They're real easy. They just slip on. Look at that nice padding on the bottom, so nothing really gets to them, and they don't wear very easily. They're really tough. They're great for little doggies, and they just Velcro right on. They're real simple. They just kind of wrap around, and you can adjust them as well. And the doggy looked to be enjoying them quite well. Um, something else I wanted to ask you about, if the dog is panting too much, is that a sign that it's time to get it inside, or is that just its way of cooling down? Well, that is a way of them cooling down, but absolutely, you know, these guys can get heat stroke just like people, and the most common problem is people put them outside to go to the bathroom, and they forget they're out there. And so it's really important to put a little bell on them, put a timer on, something so you know they're outside. I've seen several heat-related deaths, heat strokes, because people let them out to go to the bathroom, they forget to let them back in, or they put them in a run. You want to make sure they have enough space when they're outside so that that heat doesn't emanate into their little space and they get even more overheated. And Dr. Jill, you mentioned a little bit of it, but talk about for pet owners, give me two or three warning signs that the dog or your pet just isn't doing well in the sun, something that maybe humans wouldn't think about, but as far as the animal goes. Right, you know, especially panting, like Bethany said, really important. Their eyes start to get almost swollen looking and they get broken blood vessels in their eyes. Then their feet, you can actually see their feet starting to kind of dry up, vomiting, diarrhea, just lethargic. Get them into the vet, get them watered down. Don't use alcohol on their feet. A lot of people think that's the good thing to do, but it drops their body temperature too fast. Just take a little ice pack. I always carry these little handy dandy ice packs you get at the store with me. Uh, make sure it's around their neck. You can use cool bands around their neck. Just anything at all to keep them cool this summer. Really important. Oh, Dr. Jill, thank you so much. Always great advice. And of course, like humans as well, if you have older or younger pets or pets that are a little sick, you want to make sure to take extra precautions with them as well. If you'd like to schedule an appointment with Dr. Jill, go to her website. That is Dr. Jill with a Y, J Y L dot com, or give her a call. You see the number there on your screen, 916 989 0738.